big note to all the judges in America on how to deal with sovereigns and with the free man movement. Uh, do you, can you sh- shed some light on how they're doing that, uh, how they're getting around the, the free man and the sovereign? Well, it, they're basically uh, treating you as an uncooperative um, defendant. And so they simply remind you over and, uh, and then get a psych evaluation on you. Uh, or they simply uh, declare you um, to be uh, a, a uh, incompetent, uncooperative defendant. So it makes it makes their job now easier by saying it. It's in, in fact, I haven't seen the briefing notes that have gone to police, but I'm suspicious that the same things happen now because people who have been driving without plates and going down the I'm a sovereign route the number of uh, assaults against those people is on the increase. Do you have that brief, the notes on the brief to the judges that that you can share with us? I have a copy of it, and I'm going to ask uh, Gerald to put it up on the U of U, the University of Eucadia, and I'll see that that document is available on the University of Eucadia. Okay? Yes, and where on the University of Acadia is there any specific category or tab that I that I could look at? Uh, I, I I think given given the question and given the, the nature of the material, uh, I, I'm sure Joe, the webmaster, will put it pretty much on the front page. Great. Or or at least a, a, a place to know where to go. Yeah. And do you have a remedy on how to deal with if you're if you're dragged into court? What and you can't use the living man or the sovereign. Um, Stance anymore. What what would you suggest if you were dragged into court? Uh, well, that's what we're talking about tonight, and and what the basis of the several dozen pages on UK is all about. Okay, great. Thank you. No, no, thank you. And and I know, as I say, I have the greatest respect for all those that have gone down the the, the road of free man and and living man and their rights. I have absolute respect for that. But we've got to recognise when things are, uh, are part of a learning process but haven't really shown any remedy to getting to the heart of their system. And so my only concern with, with the sovereign and with the free man is that let's not fight a, an orthodoxy with an orthodoxy. Let's constantly learn and, and let's constantly try and get to the, to the heart of it and not get stuck on we do it because this is our God-given right. And my only concern is that there's a certain adversarial aspect to approaching sovereign and free man as opposed to avoiding controversy. The whole idea of the executive approach is, hey, this is your rules. Let's not make this a a, a public hoo-ha. This is your rules. This is what we've done. Dismiss the matter. Let's move on. If you want to make it a hoo-ha, you're making it, we're not making it. We're coming to you as competent, professional, sensible, honourable people. Okay, thanks for your questions. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, uh, Frank, we're going to go to the phone lines again here to PA Free Woman. Hello? Yes, hi. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, we can hear you. Hi, um, how are you? Um, I have a question. Um, I wrote the exact letter, exact truth letter, uh, uh, before I went to court, and it was a, a speeding ticket. And um, I basically draft the letter to a court of an, in, an administrator, uh, and basically the exact letter, uh, exact the exact truth letter, stating that um, you use this judge's name and uh, uh, put him as a trustee, and you are basically violating, you know, the law, uh, and um, you know, asking the bond and this and that. And uh, I gave it to her, and she basically didn't want it to deal with it, so she came back to me after, you know, a few minutes of holding it. I don't know whether she read it or not. Then um, I actually, when I enter and they call me, I basically went up to the judge and gave the letter, and he actually read it. The judge read it. Okay, so he knew, he knew who I am, 
And uh, when I claim that I am the executrix of this uh, uh, a person's matter that I came here to settle, and he completely ignored me, and he, he's like, uh, I am not there. Uh, and he keeps saying, uh, you know, uh, his uh, behalf of so-and-so, he, he says to me, um, uh, he did not call my name after that. He just said behalf of, you know, my last name. And then uh, he said, uh, well, you're driving in this uh, hi- highway. I said, you know, uh, this is irrelevant, and I'm not here to, uh, you know, answer any of your questions, and I'm here to settle my ma- settle this matter as an estate. And he completely ignored, and he ordered the trial, and uh, I, I did not consent to him. Uh, and I told him I will not do, I will not consent to the a trial, and he went, and there's like 50 people. And I tried to not be confrontation uh, with this matter, but they made me to do that. So there was 50 people listening. And, uh, you know, I was very kind and, and nice, and, the, you know, my tone of voice and everything was, 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 was uh, more like a pleasant. I was smiling, laughing. You know, and uh, he was in, in in good mood, too, but when I read the constitutional law that applies to my case, and his face turned really, really red because this ticket was out of state, and uh, the constitutional law basically states that uh, they don't have, have our jurisdiction over another state citizen. And he his face turned red, and he knew something he did wrong. And but he ignored it, and uh, he gave me a verdict, and I have to pay the ticket, and now it's it's in appellate court right now. So what do you think of that? Well, I think that is uh, that's more typical, isn't it? It's more typical of what people experience versus the theory. Um, but a couple of things, a couple of things that your experience highlight. Firstly. I take it from what you said that you were using executive letter that not we're not we're looking at, but the one that David Clarence was doing. Is that correct? Uh, what was that? The question? Uh, yeah, yeah. Firstly, it sounded like either you created your own executive letter or you used something other than Eucadia. You used someone else's. Is that right? Yeah, I I, I, uh, I use actually uh, David Clarence's letter. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. That's all right. So the reason I I mentioned that is David Clarence's executive letter, and I've said this to many people, and I'll say it again. David Clarence is a brilliant researcher. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, the thing is, it, it's it's acknowledging everyone's work and not getting stuck on I am you know I am a god of <laughs> Of legal research, and and not about and not about um, it, it's about using the knowledge that people are presenting and not get stuck on something. My concern of the David Clarence executive letter is is this: it goes on about a whole lot of different things, but it doesn't get to the heart of the matter. Part of the matter is un, under under the the way that the Eucadia executive letter is structured. And I will say that there's probably a refinement that needs to be done to make sure that the revocation of consent and guardianship is made clear, because that's what the judge was doing. The judge was still claiming that he could use the guardianship and existing powers of attorney against you, right? That's what the judge was doing. uh, He has the authority that he got it from the state. Right, but, but, that, but, that, but, that, but that the state got it ultimately from you, right? It's a roundabout way, but ultimately what you didn't do, well, first you used David's letter, not what we're talking about. So we're talking a bit chalk and cheese here. You're talking about a model that someone else has done, and what I've been talking about is a totally different approach in the executor, yeah? So that's the first. The second is, without revoking the power of attorney, you can get judges to do what they did there, which is simply run through as if you're not even there. And and that's what they did. So the last re- thing is... Yeah. Hmm? So you have Sorry? to revoke uh, the, the power of attorney 
before you enter into the courtroom? I believe you do, and I think I think this is an example where, without that, um, you, you you effectively gave the judge the opportunity to to pretend that none of that had happened, and that's what they did. They simply proceeded on the basis, and because of a parking ticket, effectively. The judge is is being the prosecutor in this because the judge is being a magistrate. Yeah. Right. So, um, do I do the revocation uh, one time and uh, notify all the parties uh, and do the court record uh, recording, uh, or do I have to do this every time when I go to court? Well, it, because we because they assume. Every time there's a court matter, not the same court matter, mind you, but because they assume the guardianship and power of attorney, until they until they collapse their CQVs and effectively recognise your trust, if you have you know go and get your membership trust number from Eucadia, until they do that and 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 treat you properly then you have to assume every single time you engage the system in any kind of controversy they raise that they're using a power of guardianship against you. So can I suggest this? I think you're... Firstly, thank you for sharing your experience because it shows how the system uh, behaves. I just qualify that that the example you used was the David Clarence executor letter, not what we're talking about. Can Can I ask... You please go and have a look at Eucadia, and I'd be very interested in in your feedback on on what you read. But I appreciate what you're saying because it, it highlights the importance that Ron Davenport was saying earlier. Uh, the importance of, of of testing and preparing, and not simply saying to people, "Go and do that, and good luck." Nothing I'm doing, and nothing we're doing, is about saying to people. There you go. Good luck, and if it doesn't work, it's your fault. Okay? All the best. So uh, uh, let me have the the website you're talking about. Uh, Well, that's one-heaven.org. Pardon me? One-one-heaven.org. Okay? One-hyphen. Oh, one hyphen heaven dot org. Oh heaven dot org. Okay. Okay, so there is a document. Yes, and there's a huge amount and uh and I, I really suggest you go and have a look. Okay. Because what yeah, what you've brought over is an experience of what someone else has been discussing. And okay. it is relevant to, to us, very relevant to us. And thank you so much for sharing. What I'd I be have very a, interested in is your... Hmm? Yeah, I have one more yes? question. Um, the, uh, getting a 98 uh, EIN number, and uh, what is that really a purpose of for the executor, store executor? Yeah, you're, again, you're, you're asking me about someone else's information. Oh. Well, I'm not David Klein. Yeah, I'm that's I'm Franco David Collins. Clarence. Yeah, and that's David Clarence. Yeah, different person. All right. Well, great. Thank you, Frank, and thank you for your question and for your experience there. And while we get back up here to Ron, uh, Ron has another question and next in line. Uh, the, a question, real quick, from the chat is: Are you using the Amicus Curia on other documents besides the executor? No, no. The the the, the Amicus Curiae is 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 really a, a, an, a reference to say that there is evidence of the role of an executor. So Amicus Curiae is in everything. It's a question of people saying, "Well, I hear this, but when I speak to an attorney or a DA or anyone, they say I don't know what you're talking about." There isn't a judge, attorney or lawyer on the planet that say, can, can, can claim to be a member of the bar and say they've never heard of amicus curiae. So it's the old story of hiding something in plain sight. What makes an amicus curiae work is when they are appointed as the executor by us for a matter. Okay? Very good. Thank you, Frank. All right, back to you, Ron. Hi, Frank. 
Hey, a, a, Hi, another quick thought. Um, I think what we need to do is consider 